in June 2023, we bought a VW Crafter van with the plan to convert it into a camper van and take it on a European road trip in the summer of 2024. In this video, we give you a complete tour and share with you how much the complete van build cost. Right, so it's time to give you guys the full tour and we're gonna go, go through every component, uh, explain why we did it, uh, explain all the electrics, explain the changes in the cab, the interior, why we chose things and why we didn't choose things. So let's start off with the cab, shall we? Right, so on the day we got the van, it's safe to say that the state of the cab was an absolute disgrace. Um, we had cloth seats on, which were covered in paint, the steering wheel was covered in paint, the dashboard, the doors, um, the, we didn't have the headliner in, we installed that when we did the build, we'll talk about that when we go um, back a little bit. But um, the first thing we did was replace the old radio system. Um, if we're going to be doing sort of van life, we, we need to have some kind of permanent telematic system. So we changed that, we got that from Amazon and it was relatively easy to install. Um, we got one at first, which was a crappy one and it was really slow and we ended up swapping it for this one, didn't we? So just plug us phone into it and it puts Android Auto or yeah. Apple CarPlay on the screen. We have got sort of like phone chargers as backups um, just to mount it, but it's better that you have it on there because you then really can use this phone when we're driving. So we also got these seat covers, which were, when, we, when you look at seat covers on a picture, you look at them and you think, oh, they're not gonna be as good as that. But these were absolutely amazing. They were really, really hard to get on. But once you got them on and they'll never come off, they just look like the original seats. And then it's like a, it's like a fake leather. And we got these from Van Pimps. It's one of the first things that we bought along with the, uh, the telematics. So the floor in a uh, crafter and a sprinter is like a grey floor and it just attracts mud marks and things like that. So we just got a cheap mat off eBay, um, I think it was 19 quid. Needs a hoover. Needs a hoover and we sorted with that. And it took me absolutely hours. I think when we got it there was a can of expanding foam which had exploded in here at some point and I had to scratch it off with my nail. This thing is not the original, the one that was in there had actually shorted out because of the condensation in the, the uh, headliner. So we replaced that with one from an earlier crafter and then wired in our own LED switch, um, which doesn't operate on the doors. We also installed a uh, dash cam system, which is a three channel dash cam. So it's got a camera inside, it's got a camera facing forward and it's got a camera out of the back window. And we also finally put some little mirrors. Yep on the um we cut the straps off there's usually like document straps we cut them off yep. and we stuck these on which we got from amazon majority of the things that we got for the van were from amazon we probably spent a fortune with amazon this year probably about 10 grand didn't we something like that yep. we added these little um doormats just so that we can wipe our feet a little bit just before we get in because no matter what you do these things get filthy so we just thought we'd um, cut these down from a doormat and uh, just place them there Right, so one thing that we needed to do when we bought the van was make sure that it's going to be secure. So we had these things fitted first of all, which are deadlocks, which are a backup to the normal central locking. Um, the van obviously has got an immobilizer. We do have uh, a tracker that we bought, which is hidden somewhere inside the van. Nobody will ever find it. We also have um, a, a hidden dead switch as well, so we can disconnect the battery when we're not there, and it can't be started um, until we come back to the van. I'm not going to explain too much, because um, obviously it's the security of the van, but we've made a lot of security enhancements to protect people, to protect us from having the van either broken into or stolen. Is it time to go inside? It is. Let's time do for the this. Big tour. Right, let's do it. Right, so the one thing that we had major problems with, with us two deciding before we started building the van, is the layout. So we followed a lot of um, Instagrammers, we've looked on Pinterest, we actually found this layout and design on Pinterest and it was a guy that had uh, built a camper van during lockdown and made it in the exact design style layout. He had a Cornish shower, he had the kitchen is very similar to this. Um, you have the cupboards there, the cupboards on this side, the TV, the table, everything in the same place in the same order. And then a lot of van life conversions companies after COVID started adapting that design and putting their own spin on sort of colours and things like that. He used a lot of bamboo on the walls. Um, we'll put some pictures on the screen now of the, the, the picture that when we both saw it, we both said, oh my God, that's the design. And then we kind of went from there and then we started looking at decor and things like that. So we had a minimum requirement that we couldn't do without when we wanted, when we started to build the van. A full sized bed, which we'll come on to a little bit later so we can get a good night's sleep. I'm trailing for a good night's sleep. A shower, so we can get showered every day. 
which we'll come on to in a moment, and a toilet, again, which I'll show you now. So And don't forget internet. Oh, and internet, but that's later in the vlog, yeah. So internet, a full-size bed, a uh, shower, and uh, a toilet. And a TV. And a TV. And running water, <laughs> and yeah, a cooker, the main and a fridge. The were the bed, the toilet, and the shower. So I'll let Nick show you the shower and the door that we got and uh, what our thoughts were on getting this. Right, so the guy that's um, design that we found on Pinterest was a guy called eyes open underscore van life underscore, um, I can't remember the rest of it, but if you type that in, it'll pop up and you'll see this design style all over it. And like I said, everybody started off with, he start, every, every van conversion company started using that design after he'd done it in lockdown. It was a big article in the uh, the Sun newspaper. We'll put some stuff on the screen now so you can have a look at it. It's a nice open space, so we just thought, yes, that's what we want. We yes. didn't want it to feel claustrophobic at all, and we think this this layout just works perfectly for us. Yeah, we did We did look at another uh, company called Jorvik. Yeah, they do great Jorvik, vans. and their, their toilet area was right in the center. I really liked that And then that the bed style. was at the back, and then you had a big open sofa area here, but the problem was, you had to lay that way and we're too tall to do yeah. that so he kind of ruled that design out lee was really keen on it but i wanted to go with this open plan design yeah and i'm glad we did in the end so um the guy that does it is called i think he's called daryl um and he put in a corner shower so my first thoughts when we built the van was shower trays weigh an absolute ton because they're made of stone and resin so we needed something that was lightweight but not like a camper van we didn't want to have that camper van look and feel we wanted it to feel like a house inside a van like a like a luxury camper van so we found the shower tray in here um on victoria plum or victorian plumbing um it was supposed to be a six kilogram tray uh, it actually weighed about three kilos it's actually three uh, it's actually made of foam with like a plastic uh, top on it so you can drill into it which we did when we fitted the, the shower door and the panels on the wall are just um, two and a half mil PVC acrylic hygienic panels, which we cut to size and then just glued to the wall. Everything was sealed with CT1. A lot of people tell you to use Sikaflex and things like that, but it's not readily available. We were using tubes and tubes a day, and you can get CT1 from Wix and MKM and other places like that. So we decided to go with CT1, and that's basically what's held, holding most of the van together. So the shower was the most important. We didn't want a shower curtain, so we went with this this door, which is like a shutter door, and that was provided by a company called Tamdoor. And they provide these, and you basically order it to the size of your door, and they make it custom made, ship it to you, and then you install it, and pretty much it was, I wasn't say it was easy to install, but when we got it installed, it and, it. yeah, we got it in, and then we put silicon lubricant into the door, and it literally became really easy to open and close then. So the toilet for us was one of the most important things as well. And you might think, you may look at that and think, God, that's cramped. And let me tell you, it is. It is. <laughs> it is cramped. Uh, but what we did is we built a plinth from the bottom of the toilet that allows it to slide back onto the shower trim, which gives you that extra, extra room for your legs. I would say if we could do it again, we would probably get the bigger size we shower. Got the Ninety centimeters. Yeah. Got so the eight just give you a little bit more extra space, but space it, there. It would have come out to about there. Yeah. And we, when we built this, it was important that we had access from here into the cab. And a lot of people messaged on our videos and said, "Why don't you just leave it open?" Now, there's two reasons why we did that. First of all, um, if you leave it open, the windows at the front are bonded windows, like these windows here. Too many bonded windows in a uh, in a camper van leads to a lot of condensation because the cold surface comes into contact with warm air and creates condensation and we wanted to insulate it as much as possible and reduce the amount of bonded windows that we had so we decided to build a wooden structured bulkhead but then we still wanted for security reasons if somebody was breaking into the van on a night we wanted access to the cab so we built a door and we put these foam backed old lats on which are about mill of wood on a, a polish not, not, not polish it's like a felt foam we put hinges here and here and this is where the door actually and you can see here it's a secret door so this slat board actually folded which was great and then we carpeted the back we built a headliner shelf to store towels um other components for the van like the jump starter and things like that and built that all that in there we also That's, added that that so you can uh, we can keep it open if yes. we want to so when we did our trials we realized that um it was a pain in the backside so we built a yeah. bolt sometimes we, we like to keep it open and just so we can see straight through to the window yeah um, and on a night if you need access in there if you need to drive away urgently you just basically slid it over the seat 
um, unless you have a larger design and then uh, you have to take that off. Have we actually tried doing that yet? No. <laughs> we haven't tested it. But we can it. get through, we can get through definitely. Um, so this was our um, secret door. It also gave us access to storage because storage was one of the most important things. We didn't know how much space we were going to need so everything we did was storage, storage, storage and we also had to factor in the fact that we had to keep materials light as well which is where I went for the tray because this van can only be over, only three and a half kilos, three, sorry, three and a half tons and if it goes over that you have to have it replated uh, and we didn't want the hassle of doing that so all along the entire build journey we were constantly taking it to a weighbridge and weighing it. So plenty of space for storage at the back there. So going back to the toilet, we wanted a toilet that was as close to a house toilet as possible. And you can get small porta potties, but you're literally crouching on your hands and knees. This one is almost the same size as a normal toilet in a house. And we got the electric one. So it's you just push a button and it flushes. And the only difference is there's just a handle here. When you do your business, you pull the handle and it opens the, the thing in the bottom and drops down and you just flush it like that. Just drop that in. And then you can fill your flush water up here shut the lid and you've got a holder there for toilet roll so it doesn't get wet not that we actually shower in over this this thing lifts out when we get the shower and then goes back in afterwards and then there's a little um indicator on the front that shows you when the bottom bit's full which is where all the uh, waste goes and you just take it to a chemical disposal station pour it in um, we're actually going to start using um, laundry pods biological laundry pods which apparently a lot of people said um, it's better for the environment and it means you can just empty it in sort of regular toilets because it does break down all the material so the only thing that you're flushing away is just liquid basically um, we went for a proper household shower rather than a camper van shower we ordered this special um, shower head from a company in Poland which limits the flow rate to no more than five litres a minute but what we also did is on the stopcocks for these shower taps which are actually in the bottom of this cover behind the oven we actually turned the flow rate down on them as well um, we can get 40 litres of water we can last for two people for three days plus washing up before we run out of water and 40 litres is generally what we carry um, around when we sort of visit campsites Right, so that's the, uh, the toilet. There isn't much more I can say about a toilet. Uh, then moving on to the kitchen. So we wanted a very large kitchen because I like cooking and we wanted a lot of storage space. So we watched a YouTube um, channel called Van Life Conversions. Was it Van Life Conversions, Ollie? Maybe. Showed us how to build these. He had a demonstration video on how to build uh, upper cupboards. So we watched his video and we used his technique to model it. So it was based on a wooden frame which clipped to the to the back here and on the wall and then we put the cupboard fronts on and as you can see there's quite a lot of storage in here we've put dividers in and there are three of them and then we've got magnetic catchers and little oak handles and then these things here we got these from ebay these keep the door shut clamped shut so when you open it it needs a little bit of force to pull it open first to release the catch and then to hold it up and then they they hold themselves up as well so these actually are really good and we've not had any cupboards open while we've been traveling at all so we've got three of these some um, wooden oak handles which we got from ebay um, we didn't want traditionally when you do a camper van build a lot of people go for furniture board because it's light and that's one thing that we didn't want to compromise on we didn't want it like reproduction furniture we wanted a solid oak worktop so we ordered this online. They cut all the noggins and things in exactly where, they knew, where we needed it. What they didn't do is oil it. Um, so we had a problem initially where it was bowed on one side. They'd oiled the top, but they'd not oiled the bottom. Um, we had to oil it ourselves, and then we used have to use um, metal screw clamps to pull the unit down onto the carcass which we built ourselves. So a lot of people will buy pre-made kitchen furniture we didn't we actually built this exactly we'll put on the screen now all the dimensions that it was and how we did it we did it on adobe illustrator we knew all the dimensions before we started we knew where we wanted the oven and um the whole of the kitchen and the color of this was actually based on another instagram account called van pura vida it's a mouthful to say and um, we contacted the lady that does all the conversions and one of their customers had ordered this design style um, which I think is based on the guide from the Sun and they called it Henry and we absolutely loved the colors so we contacted the lady at Instagram and she kindly she called uh, Cecile she kindly sent over the kit list of everything they ordered because we just loved it and um, she didn't know the she didn't know the color of the, the paint but we got a good match um, with B&Q 
and um, this we just saw in Dun & Mills material and we ordered some but um, the, the kitchen design it's a pretty much exactly the same as what they've done uh, we loved it that much that we decided that we wanted it so this kind of is, is a little bit different the ovens the same the position of the hob and the sink are the same um, the fridge we went for a C 35i Vita Vigo Vitri Vigo which is a compressor fridge a very very low power consumption fridge which is really powerful and this thing believe it or not runs on fresh air so we've had this running ever since we put it in the van and the batteries when when they're off line uh, when they're not plugged in are running at 100% continuously so it doesn't take any power at all one thing with like we said we needed storage so this thing here clips off so we've got access to be able to repair the oven if we need to um, we needed some storage below so currently that's used for the toaster and least tech we are contemplating putting a microwave in there um, if we can get one that fits so that may disappear at some point the drawers we got um, locking hinges from eBay no sorry locking hinges from Amazon so when you push them you don't have to have like a catch because a lot of camper vans you have to lock them these things lock by pushing in and out um, lining them up and calibrating them was a challenge but um, all this was made from I think it was 12 mil ply all of it which we assembled piece by piece and fully um, built these ourselves from from sheet wood really and loads of storage and we've managed to fill them all already and then right at the bottom we've got another cupboard which is for pots and pans that actually sits on the floor behind the light trim at the bottom giving us loads more storage and there's tons and tons of space still above this is a false front there's no access here but this bit there's a cupboard for all your cleaning products and we've put a shelf in there and as you can see the back of the water tank from the from the back brings comes through into the kitchen um, we'll talk a little bit about the water tank when we go to the garage area but we've got gauges there to show you water levels uh, with sensors that are built into the water tank and then we got these little plastic clips from Amazon and the same captures that we used on the upper cupboards we use for the kitchen doors as well. So our control panel, we were really adamant when we built the van that we didn't want a visible control panel because when you look, a lot, when you look at a lot of van life conversions, they always tend to be different colours and I think they look really messy. We were fortunate that, we were managed, that when we got all our controls together, they were all black. So this is our control panel. So we've got space to put a mobile phone in there so you can slot it in on a night. And then we've got charging points in the um, lamp rest things, reading lamps. Uh, that says max air control, which we'll come back to in a minute. And then we've got three switches. We've got one for Starlink. Uh, we've got one for the inverter and we've got one for the water pump. And then we've got the boiler controls, which is actually a dual control system. It's a Trumo 4E which is actually a dual fuel so it will run on gas or it will run on, on electric if we are on a campsite and we don't want to use our gas we just switch it to electric mode and it basically heats the water and heats the um, the van if we need it to all control from there and it's really accessible because when we're in bed and we want to turn the heating on we just lean up tap the button put in what we want and, and off it goes and then this is just a little thermometer that shows us a humidity level which we thought we might need when we're going to Europe and the temperature inside the van so it was nice and simple and it was all the same colour and it didn't look out of place so we decided we would go for that. Back into the kitchen area, the window that we got was actually a double glazed plastic window which we had multiple issues with getting it to fit without leaking. We had lots of leaks because we were following other YouTube videos that weren't using the right material so we've, we've learnt a lot of not ways not to do things when we did the van. Um, but we got there so and then the, the windowsills is actually leftover plastic from the shower we had a normal kitchen tap which has got the um, sprinkle and jet mode and we have this little thing because what we didn't think about is on a night when we want to extend the bed it comes out here we didn't want someone kicking this and flooding the van so we put this little hairband on the top that keeps the lever shut so if you do did it by mistake it would just close itself like that which has worked fine um, normal kitchen tap we got that from Amazon and the kitchen sink we got from Amazon quite a small one um, it's been perfect for us hasn't it? it is the the worktops are actually slightly lower than a standard worktop in a house for the very reason that we wanted um, the bed to extend in a way that would go over our living space but not impede our sleep so we built it so half the bed is fixed and then the other half is basically um, a 
extending bed. So I'll, I'll show you how that works now. I'll we wait. have tried sleeping that way and it just doesn't work we for us. We will never do it again. It's too short. So there we go. So the bed comes out to there, it hits the tap and then there's a stopper that stops it going any further. And then we have a piece of uh, mattress, which we usually store inside the shower, but it's outside the van at the minute. Um, it will go in the garage. It slots in there and you just pull the blankets underneath and it gives you a full size bed with just between super king and king size uh, dimensions. One thing that we didn't anticipate is that the gap when you're laying in bed up there is not massive. So if you're a wriggler, you do tend to bang your knees and your hands on this. So, so Lee, I sleep Lee there. doesn't move <laughs> when he goes to sleep. So he goes there now. So it's the opposite and side I love, of it. I love getting under my little nook. It, so I don't mind. So, and then we're in the morning, we pop this away like this. And then we just kind of remake the sofa with the cushions, which we'll do in a second. Um, so the original design for the sofa area was again based on um, eyes open underscore van life. He had this table area and he had bamboo that came down and a window here. Now we wanted a TV and we toyed between a TV and a projector. Um, we tried a projector, it just wasn't bright enough and you wouldn't be able to get this kind of visual during the day and we use this TV a lot and it's not, we don't even have an aerial, everything is streamed on demand so from YouTube and Netflix and it just runs off Starlink, which we'll come to in a little bit. Um, it's mounted onto a frame, um, a, a bracket, sorry, and the bracket actually goes into the metal struts. When we were building the van, we knew where we were gonna put it and we put reinforcements in the wall so we knew we could anchor the, the TV onto it. And it's a very light TV. I think it weighs about three kilos. It's the lightest TV I've ever felt. And it's actually got an Amazon Fire Stick built into it, which so it's, it's great. And it can rotate this way. You can rotate it that way. Swing it this way if you sat there. Yeah, I can sit here and or watch it and it can there. swing this way. So the original design for this area was that this table was here and we had just that stool and this, and it was just a seating area. It was like a little office, yes. a, a little kitchen area where you, you know, we'll put photos on. We used to sit opposite yep. each other. But what it, we found, it wasn't is particularly that great for chilling out. It was at, it actually came up to about here. So when you were sat in it, you were scrunched up like that, and then the curvature of the wall, you lost even more. So when you were eating your dinner, you were kind of like, it's like your elbow were fixed to the table, and then so, there was nowhere to chill out on an evening. Really. Yeah. So I would be laid in bed. Lee would be sat here and like, well, I want to lie down. So Lee came up with the idea of permanently having the sofa out yeah permanently having it out and then this section here can be put away because it all converts it converts to that kitchen air area um, mode and it converted into a, a sofa yeah but I, I was finding I was using it as a sofa much more so we decided to make it more permanent and then we put a lagoon mount on here so the table now will swing around and we can, and we can rotate here, the top as well if we want to. And look out of the window whilst we eat as breakfast, eat as meals or yep. do any work that we've got to do. Now the curtain, we originally had a curtain for blackout and we had too much of this colour and we hated it. But we wanted something that would give us the ability to have it private but let light in. So we just went for this cheap IKEA curtain, which to be fair will probably get used when it's hot summer days. So we've not, we just we've want, not used it yet. Yeah. But we absolutely um, love our lagoon mount. Again, that came from Amazon, and we just attached it to the end the base chair, swivel. and um, it just swivels out on that. So when we're not using it on a morning, if we're running away, we just put it there. And at all times, we have a sofa just to relax. Yep. So we've got storage under here all the time. We've got storage under here, and in here we have storage. We've got an air fryer stored in there, which we can bring out and plug into the uh, electric. We also have storage in our little stool that we put there as like well. A shoe, a shoe yeah, stool, a little shoe it? cupboard. Yeah. Um, that's where so that was we keep well. shoes and things, because we found ourselves moving that to here so we could sit and look out of the window. So we wanted one for here. So we built another stool. You'll find if you have a van, if you build a van, the, obviously the more you use it, the more you'll find. Yeah. Oh, we went I on tweak trials. That. I want to tweak this, I want to tweak that. We went on a lot of trials yeah. and came back with lists. The first list was massive, the second one wasn't so bad. And then in the end, we knew the van was finished when we came back and there was nothing to change. So this is our sort of seating area. So this here was where the table mounted onto this. We're actually going to take this off here now and then just um, paint the wall and just get it blended in. And so we've got another cushion we have another cushion, which so it's a full sofa with a back. Yeah. So as well as um, having this bit that comes out to make a, a little bit like a, a chaise long, um, this does go away. Let me pop it away. And then we had a little hatch 
that allows us access to the garage, which we'll show you when we go around there. And that just allows us to get things from in there on a night without going outside and going round and opening the doors. Right, so moving on to the bed area where we spend um, about a third of our day when we're um, in the van. So we wanted um, something that was going to be comfortable. So we had a mattress purpose made by a company called Custom Beds and they fitted, they cut this exact. We told them to cut it so we can take the extension bit out, which they did. Um, they can also make it so they can make it rounded and things like that, but there was no requirement for us to do that. But um, the, the mattress is extremely comfortable. Um, it weighed quite a bit, but again, we weren't gonna compromise on something like sleep. So we went for what we know we were gonna get good night's sleep because we can't function without, without sleep. Um, the bed area, we've got one unit which is exactly the same as the cupboards. It was built with the same sort of design features. It's like a batten frame that goes all the way around and it's, it basically bolts to the wall here and at the bottom and is anchored at the top there. Same brackets as we used on the kitchen cupboards and that is sufficient for the both of us to store our clothes for, I'd say a month. Although we've only done we'll two weeks. Out. We've only done two <laughs> weeks at the minute. But we've got the ability to do laundry. We've got a little washer under the cupboard, which we got from Timu. We've got the whole garage area to put extra clothes in. Yes, we have. As well. So when we were building the van, the one thing that we wanted to try and do was have somewhere to put mobile phones and uh, remote controls and things like that on a night. So when the walls were built, we left these bits open. At the time when we were doing it, we had no idea how it was going to look, but we eventually realized we had some of this stuff left from the lattered wall behind. So we put these in here and then put some strip lights in. Um, and then they're controlled by little switches on the wall here, which we got, which we ordered from Italy, which were actually from Amazon Italy. So they're dimmer switches um, and they will activate on and off. We didn't want black clunky switches. We wanted something that was like contemporary modern. And we have the same ones here in the kitchen. So we can put the lights on and off. And then we have one that's tucked down the cupboard side where all the cleaning products are for the bottom strip light. The ceiling lights are all um, 12 volt, everything, everything, 99% of the electrics in the van are 12 volt, um, so it just runs off your standard car battery type um, technology. These things uh, you can turn off, you can turn them on for reading lights, and you can basically turn them on and then dim them. So, but to be fair, we've not really used them other than ceiling lights at the minute, uh, and they're controlled by nickel, black nickel, normal electric um, house switches that we've just wired in just to act as sort of like switches on and off. And we've got one here. We've got lights above the door near the entrance. And we've got one there for the bathroom. And those are the only light switches that we have other than the LED ones. We fitted uh, bedside lamps, which were wired into the wall. It's the one thing that when we were building the van, we had to think about what was going where when we started building it so we could get the wires in. So we knew here that we wanted a USB uh, in the kitchen area, which we ordered from Timu. There's one under the bench along with a um, a normal 13 uh, three pin socket and then we've got another three pin socket there we've got one in the back of this cupboard where all the back of the switchboard goes and then we've got one underneath in the garage and then one by the door so we've got plenty of outlets so one of the other major things that we had to think about when we were building the van and one of the topics that came up when we were watching a lot of videos and doing a lot of research was good ventilation and good insulation. So we lined the walls with uh, recycled plastic bottles which was fire retardant which we got from B&Q and we stuffed it in every nook and cranny and then filled any up extra holes that we couldn't get to with expanding foam. Um, we knew that putting an aircon unit in would be expensive to run, expensive to buy, and the weather in this country is, you don't really need aircon. So we, we stuck with a standard Max Air fan, which is an extractor fan as well as air. It will pull air down and it will also push air out. So if all the doors are closed and we open this just normal skylight, which is just a ventilation skylight, if we set the Max Air on and it's warm in here, it will draw air in Pull it, pull it out and suck it out through the fan and equally so if it drags it in as well and pushes it out it creates like a like a wind tunnel and you would think oh that's never going to cool you down but it cools you down it's like having a wind tunnel running through the van and it's really really effective isn't it yeah right so moving on to the garage area which is um my man cave so it's in here where all the magic happens so i'm going to go around and explain what's what and what it does um, so when we designed the van, we wanted, we considered having purely electric for like the hub and, and ob, the hob and things like that. And um, 
we soon realised when we when we spec'd up the electrics that we would have to buy massive batteries to be able to do all our cooking off the batteries and buy like an induction hob. So we decided we want to go with a gas system. So we have a boiler there, which is a Trumo 40 boiler, which runs off gas, and we have a, a gas low gas tank that allows us to fill up like petrol at a petrol station. There's a connector point on the outside. You fill it up and you can run this thing at about 80% and it just pumps gas through just like it would do in your house. Um, the boiler is a combi boiler, so it will heat water up um, when you need it. It's got a 10 litre tank in there and it will also blow hot air fans inside the van. If we're on electric hookup, we can shut the gas down and switch the electric on and everything switches across and it doesn't consume any of our gas. So if we're on a campsite and we do have electric, this never gets used, apart from if we're cooking dinner and we want to pile, boil some beans or do some eggs and bacon or something like that. Um, so behind it is our water tank. Now we seriously overspect this thing. Um, this thing will carry 100 litres of water. We never run it past 40 litres. And as you know, a kilo, uh, a litre of water weighs one kilo. So we know exactly what the weight is when, we, when we're travelling around with this. So if we fill it to 40 litres, uh, and it actually extends right over the, the wheel arch and goes into the, the kitchen cupboard, as you saw, um, it's all connected in, all the plumbing that we had to do ourselves, we had to learn to do it and we've got like a, a pump that's behind the kitchen cupboards and then a little expansion vessel to allow for temperature variation so we've continuously got seven bars of pressure in the system. So water, we fill it up here and we keep this little cap loose because you have to have air flowing in because if you turn the taps on and there's no airflow, it would stop the pump from working because you need to draw air in to replace the water that's come out. Um, this is relatively new. This is, um, we found that the garage area was just, everything was just thrown in and we couldn't get in. So we built this rack and everything kind of slots in there now. And then this thing here is a little gauge that, a little probe that goes right down in the tank and basically sends a little read in to a readout on a display inside the kitchen cover that tells you how much water we've got. So that side, quite basic. So this side, this is like the crown jewels. This is the electric systems and everybody that sees this gasps and says, oh my God, how complicated does that look? Um, this was actually one of the easiest things to do and actually worked first time as well. So it's an entire 12 volt system. So I'll go through the spec of it and I'll explain that part, what some of these little sort of components do um, and just kind of dumb it down a little bit because not even Lee knows what this does. So these are our batteries, all our power for the van, all the lights, all the inverter, all the 13 volt sockets, uh, the 13 amp sockets that run on 240 volt, all come from these 12 amp uh, batteries. So each one of them is 100 amp hours. So if you have a device that's, that's one amp, this battery will run it for 100 hours before it'll deplete the battery. And we've got 300 of them. Uh, we, can, we can read from this little device here, which is called a shunt. Uh, it connects on Bluetooth and it tells us what the charge status is of these batteries at any point and we just can look at that when we're inside the van on a little app on his phone and it tells us basically whether we need to charge it, it tells us whether we've got power coming in from different sources. So these batteries get charged one of three ways. They will be charged from the solar panels on the roof, they will be charged by the electric hookup when it's connected to a campsite or it will be connected to a charger which is connected to the, the van's engine. So all those three can all run at once and keep those batteries topped up no matter where we are. So at the minute, I can see from these light statuses here that the batteries are completely full. And this is the solar controller, which takes the energy from the solar panels and regulates it and dumps it into the battery so it doesn't overload them. When this sees that the batteries are full, it backs off and switches this into a state called float, which means it's waiting to put energy in. So at the minute, the solar panels are there and available, but they're not doing anything because the batteries are full. This beauty here converts all that 12 volt energy, which is effectively the same kind of power as you would get in a battery, like a household battery, and it converts it into the same as you get in your sockets in your house. And then it feeds it through this device, from the batteries into this device, which is like a distributor, pumps it in there, and then it spits out and feeds it into this system, which then sends it to the kitchen sockets and lets you plug in your air fryer, your coffee machine, your hair dryer, your mobile phone charger, and all those kind of things. So that just converts that form of power from um, DC to AC and lets us run on 200, 230 volts, 240 volts. This thing here is a dead switch, should we have to shut it down in an emergency? This just cuts power to everything. 
This one just cuts power to the 12 volt system. So this will still work if on the inverter and we can just shut down all the, the lights and things. So these things here, if I shut this down, you'll see this light goes off. So all the 12 volt systems are working, but the inverter stays on. And this, it just runs off standard car fuses. And you can see here, ceiling lights are on port one with a three amp fuse and so on and so on. And um, this cable here connects the car battery at the front on the alternator and pumps it into this. This regulates it and then says, oh, the batteries are full. I need to top it up a little bit. Um, these are just like the standard fuse boxes that you get in your house. And then the, the, one of the best things that we did was convert our Starlink system from a normal three pin socket to a 12 volt system. And we have a separate video on that if you've not already seen it. But we basically got rid of the Starlink router. We got rid of the um, power brick that came with it. And we used these three components here, plus a little router to replace everything that Starlink provided. And the Starlink dish, we cut the back of it we stuck it on the roof and we fed this cable up to the roof and it comes down in here and connects up to that and we have Starlink on the control panel, just switch it on and off. And it works absolutely flawlessly. And then storage wise in here, we have a set of drawers, which full of spares, tools. So everything when we built the van, we've got spares in here. So if we need um, to replace some of the piping, for the kitchen, let's so say we split a pipe by mistake or it freezes or something like that, we've got spares. We've got spare switches that we're gonna carry with us so we can do repairs as we drive. And then we've got a full set of sort of basic tools, electric charger, socket set, um, spare fuses. So that's the garage area. I'd just like to say I knew everything that Nick said about those electrics. Can you turn that light off then behind you? See? <laughs> We put these on the uh, doors here just for our, uh, a little bit of extra storage. That's our um, hose pipe that we use all the time. Got these brackets from Timu. Yeah, we made those um, blinds. We had, well, we do have some curtains there, which we we haven't really, well, we used- We use them in Cornwall. We use them in Cornwall. When it was a bit breezy, we pulled them on, um, but we really like these blinds just to pull down on, a, on an evening. Which are made from a pair of curtains. Yeah. I think Nick did a fantastic job with those. Um, so Nick is now gonna go get on the roof and show you what's up there. So while Lee goes and gets the keys for the ladder so I can get up to the roof, I'll explain a little bit about the exterior of the van and what we did to it. So um, if you saw the video, the van build videos, you know that it was an old decorator's van and it was covered in paint. It was silver. We had it wrapped uh, in like a metallic gray wrap. Uh, we changed the wheels on the van as well from being standard steel wheels to alloy which saved us about sort of 12 13 kilos in weight but i'll have a walk around and i'll show you some of the external features that we've added and changed this port here is actually where we fill the gas so when we're at the filling station for lpg we pull this out oh something flew then and we basically put in the um like a petrol pump you twist it you lock it you push the button and it fills your gas tank up inside which you saw let me just pop that back in uh, here is the ventilation for the boiler. So if you're burning gas, obviously you need to get your uh, your carbon monoxide um, vent. Um, as, I, as I said, the alloys have been changed. All these were really badly degraded and we restored this with a product called Polytrol. Um, all this, there's, there's actually a dint there from the, uh, the decorator, so we replaced all the lettering. Brought it up as brand new. Uh, this is the kitchen window that we spoke about, which was a swine to fit and leaked a couple of times. We have security cameras on the roof, which actually act as spotlights as well, which are really good. We'll just walk around. Um, we changed all these because all these were faded. Um, we changed the bumpers at the back, which I'll show when we go around. We put new wipers in. We restored all the trims, as I said. You just walk all the way around. We had to put new lights in because none of those were working. Um, we still haven't finished this step area. We're going to paint that black. And then here is the uh, electric socket for connecting to shore power. There we go. And then again, the lettering. And then one thing I noticed that we didn't show you is that is the camera for the rear that actually powers the, uh, that goes to the dash cam. Right, I'm on the roof. So the one thing you'll notice is that the wrap doesn't extend all the way up. Um, we didn't want the extra expense of color in the roof when nobody's gonna see it. So we fitted a reversing camera 
which wasn't standard, which connects to the telematic system in the dash. The skylight is a Dometic skylight. Um, this is our Starlink dish, which actually we cut the back off and put it onto a 3D printed dish, which we sprayed to match the van. And then we have three solar panels um, here, here and here, which totals um, 420 watts of um, energy from the sun, which is enough to keep the batteries fully charged. We've never had a problem where we've not had the, the sun to power it. And then we've got two security cameras here, um, each powered by little solar panels there and there, which are actually glued down. And then we've got our Max Air fan, which is, um, it actually, when, it, when it's activated, it tilts upwards and it will extract and, and blow. Um, but there we go, there's not much to show you up there, but all these here, these connect down to the solar controller inside and regulate the energy that's coming from these so it can be used by the batteries. These things here are glands which allow the cables from the solar panels and from the Starlink to get down into the cavity. So we've got one there for the solar and one there for the Starlink. And they're all watertight, hopefully, and sealed so there's been no more leaks. Right, so now we've done the tour, we're going to go inside, sit down and talk to you about the costings and uh, the final total of what it cost to build this van. A lot of people have been asking us um, how much we've actually spent on it, so um, stay tuned and uh, you'll find out. Right, welcome to the part of the video that a lot of people have been asking about how much did the van build cost. Now Nick's broken it down into a few different columns and things like that so we'll go through those yeah. and then we'll uh, tell you about everything we'll that we we'll, we'll go through the figures. I mean these are rough figures anyway, we've not counted pences and things like that so it'll be a couple of quid out if not. So we've broken the video down. Lee's got it on his piece of paper. It's like a little newsreader, aren't you? <laughs> um, Trevor McDonald. Yeah. So we've got it basically broken down and we'll go through all the components now and then we'll give you the figure and then we'll tell you what is optional that we chose to add, that we didn't need to, and what were we overspect and what that figure is. So you can give you a true representation of what it would have cost versus what it did cost. So what we could have made it for if we were on a budget or what it did cost, basically. Yeah. So the first thing, is to um, all these figures that we're gonna quote include the cost of the van. So the first figure is the van cost. We paid 5,895 pound. Um, that's it really, isn't it? Well, yeah. So that's the, that's the van cost. For the van, that is, yeah. that is what the, the base van cost. We drove to Slough, we picked that up and it cost us 5,895 pound. Yes. And Plus the tax, we have to pay for the tax on it as well. Right. Okay. On top of that. So, so that's how much the base van cost. Um, it had about 150,000 miles on it. Um, it was about um, 18 years old, something like that. Something like that, yeah. It had only been on by one person. It was a, a decorator kind of stroke handyman's van, so there was a lot of paint work that needed removing from the bodywork inside the cab. The seat belts have still got it on. We got, were struggling to get that off, short of new seat belts. Ollie going out there and scrubbing it. Um, that was the state of the van. We knew that, and we knew that a lot of the plastics on the exterior um, could be changed. These are one of the optional things that didn't have to be changed, but we chose to do it. If we were going to go it, going to go this far, we might as well go up the whole hog. So the other areas that we've broken it down into are the build cost, the actual cost of wood and the components in the, the, the van to build it, the interior costs, so furnishings, oven, fridge, all that kind of stuff, um, repair costs, which I will explain a little bit more about on that later, because uh, a lot of them were optional as well. The systems costs, so Starlink, the electrics, um, uh, the, the other bits and bats that we put inside that were optional things, and the cost of tools that we had to buy to be able to do the build because we didn't have the right tools. So we'll start off with the very first one. So you know the van cost, so we'll put that on screen now. Um, I wonder how much we um, spent in bacon, butters and cups of teas. There needs another, needs another category for that. Um, so the first of all, so the build costs. Now bear in mind that all these figures include all the things that we chose to add that we didn't need to, and we will we will tell you what we added, which you can take off that figure at the end. So stay, so stick with us. So the build costs, we spent thirteen thousand one hundred and fifty-one pound on materials, timber, uh, and things like that, and that includes anything that's any wastage or anything we've changed as mines on and things like that. Uh, the second figure was the interior costs. So this is basically everything from knives and forks to plastic cups, toasters, duvets, curtains, and we bought many curtains. All as furnishings. All as furnishings, and anything that basically was used to decorate or fill out the interior of the van. So the oven, the fridge, the cob, um, so flooring, well. things like that, like carpets and things like that. 
So we spent £5,917 on them. Um, the next one is repairs. So this one is um, there's some optionals included in this. But most of it's optional. Yeah. So short of a flat tire and getting a drive belt changed and choosing to get other things fixed while while it was in bits, which were all optional. We didn't have yeah. to have a new clutch. That we didn't have thing. to have a new radiator. If you remember when when we had that video and the front of Taylor was basically stripped bare while I was doing something, yeah. he said. While it's like this, do you want me to do this, 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 and that? It doesn't really need doing, but it will do at some point, so we did get it done. To avoid the labour costs. Yeah. So all that included, uh, including all the optional stuff, was another £4,887. Uh, I think about £300 of that were essential that we had to get done. But the rest of it was options for us. To keep her going for years to come. Yeah, so we just didn't have to think about it. Like, we didn't need a new clutch, but we chose to have one because it was in bits. Yeah. So we just paid the clutch costs and the labour to get it done. Uh, the next one was systems costs. So this one is highly, um, this one is overspecced. So we chose the electric systems based on what the company that we bought it from, a company called Vunked. They spec'd it out. We effectively almost doubled the spec because we didn't know where we wanted to, where we were going to be using. Ignore that sound. Somebody's um, cutting some flags outside. Um, so we didn't know whether we were going to be off grid a lot of time and we didn't want to be short on power So we basically almost doubled the spec of what they recommended. So systems costs including Starlink was another £6,310 um, And then the final one was the tools cost which was £945 on tools Probably a little bit more actually because we bought drill bits and things like that and I've not counted them So that gives us a total final total that we've spent of £37,105 including the van um, now, like I've said, that is stuff that we've chose to add in there. So if we take all that off, we actually chose um, £10,167 of things that we added that were optional that we didn't need. We didn't need the slat wall. We didn't need the old worktop. We could have gone with furniture board. We didn't need Starlink. Mm. Um, the so The wrap. We didn't need the wrap. We didn't need the security locks. We didn't need the alloys. We chose all them. They were completely <laughs> optional. So if you take that figure off, and also we spent another, um, well not another amount, but we spent £11,396 of things that we could have got cheaper. So we've worked on the fact that we over it, and if we reduce that by 50%, the total costs that we could knock off our final build costs were £15,862 which means that we would have had a final build price of 21,245 and that would give us a budget basic build with a van that had paint on it, had silver paint, normal tires, um, now when we the started bumpers this, and the lights, we didn't need any of them and I've got a list of all the optionals which I will which I will cover. When we started this, I had him in mind it probably cost about 21 grand and that's what Yeah. Without all the optionals, that's what it's come out at, and that was in my mind. So yes, it is more yeah. than I thought, so almost the, double more than I thought it was going to be. But as we've said, I've been tracking it; I've been going along, so I knew that. But but ten thousand of optional extras and another five thousand six hundred of things that we've mm. we've gone over the top that we didn't need. We just played on the air of side on air on the side of, uh, of caution. We never wanted it to feel like we we're in a van. We wanted it to feel like it was a little home, a little apartment. Yes. For when we're away for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time, we wanted it to be somewhere where we would want to be shower, toilet. We didn't want a camper van build. We wanted no. a, a Mo like apartment a style. Type, yeah. Type. So, well. so the options that we added in that we could have disregarded are the aircon. We didn't need that. Uh, you say seat, aircon? What yeah. Do you mean? Aircon recharge. Oh, okay. Uh, seat covers. We didn't need that technically. We could have scrubbed them and got them clean. Um, we the rear lights we could have had them buffed up. We got new the sound deadening. It's not necessary because we blocked off the partition. Uh, the sat nav in the system we could have just got a phone holder and used that. We didn't need it. Um, we had new key fobs because the ones that got paint on it they cost a little bit. Reversing camera. Um, some of the lighting inside the van were more decoration than functional. Um, the slat wall that was 190 pound. We didn't need that. We could have just painted it white or we could have just put a mural on it or yeah. carpet yeah could have done that um, we actually got a personalized license plate for it again optional we didn't need that 700 pound for the alloys 180 pound for the cushions uh, security locks we didn't need them that was almost 700 pound 
uh, bumpers and replacement plastics on the outside, all optionals. And then it goes on and on and on. The wrap, two and a half thousand for the wrap. Um, and then there's little things like the body bag for the cushion, the polytrol, um, curtains, many curtains in the list. Plant pots, thermometers, uh, a special cable to program the Victron inverter. We didn't need that. We didn't have to convert the Starlink to uh, 12 volt and we didn't have to buy a Starlink. So all these are kind of optional extras. And that, that, that total, as I said, comes to a total of £10,167. But that could have been scrapped. Yeah, but all those optionals make it feel like a home. They're, they're they our make looks. it somewhere we want to stay for an extended period. Yeah, for us, they are essential, but they're not necessarily no. functional for the build. No, but for our build... We chose to have them. We, and, and that's where the £37,105 comes from. So yeah. that is our build total. So 15862 15, we could have we could have made do and scrapped. Um, which would make the build 21,245, which was probably cheaper than we actually expected it to finish. Uh, I know you said it. I didn't. had in my head about, I don't know why, but I had in my head about 21 grand. Because right at the beginning, I always used to think, well, could we buy one for 20 grand? Like no. at the all done. And then I think if we can get one for about no. 21 grand, I'll be happy. We've gone over spec, we've gone over budget, uh, but we're happy with what we've got. However, we still saved a lot of money by having a professional van conversion company yes. to do the work for us, including buying all the materials. We so looked into it. We looked into it. And it was averaging around 42,000. Plus fact. Just for people to convert a van, you had to buy the van, buy on the top. van and, and supply your van. Um, so we've saved, we've got with the spec, the, the spec that we've got and doing it ourselves to the same standard, including the van, we've saved around 20 grand. Yeah. Plus, it's our, like Nick's built it, I've helped, Nick's built it, so he knows everything about that van. I know, you know where every wire yeah. is, I know where every screw Something is. Something goes wrong, hopefully. I know which Nick's panel to cut open. To, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. You're more equipped to fix it, because you know where things are. So yeah, 40,000 plus that, plus a van, for somebody to, to, to convert it for us, and they put all the equipment in, the same spec equipment that, um, that we've got. Yeah. So. Let us know in the comments below what you think to that. Is it what you expected? Is it lower? Is it higher? Um, do you think we've got as money's worth? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> we think we have. We think we have. We think we absolutely yeah. love it and we think we've, we've done it perfect. So let us know in the comments uh, what you think to that. Uh, it's been a long time coming, that um, figure. figure. Um, we only actually finalised the figure yesterday anyway. So there you have it. After all these months, it's done. The build is done. Well, so it's less. Nick says it'll never be done, but no, uh, we'll be always done. be tweaking little things and, and what have you. And we'll always spending a little more, bit money, but the majority of the cost, the build is done. So we bought it 11 months ago, but with our trips away and being away from the lodge in January and our trips to France and Florida, we've spent around four months solid on it, and then around another two months kind of tweaking it and yeah. trialing it. So it took us about six months to yeah. build it. So thank you for sticking with us throughout all these. Uh, van build vlogs it'd be much appreciated and we've enjoyed doing it haven't we i have most of the time i have um and that's another thing if we'd have just you know given it to a, a company and they'd have brought it back we'd have just picked done, it up and gone in it would have been like i mean yeah we would have we'd have, we'd have traveled a lot more early and sooner yeah but we wouldn't have and we've got all that to look forward to now we've yes. got lots of memory making to do yes and, and hopefully um, we'll have the van now for years to come yeah and it's there for whenever we want to use it and we can just say right let's go here let's go there let's go here and, it's um, ready now for Europe. Yes. Oh, but it's ready for more maybe UK trips. We don't know yet. Yeah. But, um, oh yeah, there'll definitely be more UK trips. Yeah. We're off to Scotland. And so not until it's warm. <laughs> thanks for watching this video. Drop us a comment below. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here. You've just come to our video from this. You can go back and watch our six months of van builds and look forward to lots more van vlogs. And um, hit the subscribe button. Drop us a comment below. As I said, hit the like button, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye. Oh,